Do you want to hear how I've discovered to relieve puffiness in the cheeks, possibly the eyes, and in around here in just maybe an hour or so? Well, stay tuned and you'll see what I've been doing so far as facial massaging and lymphatic draining. Whoa, big word, but big results. I can't believe that an 86-year-old has been as busy as we've been lately, but we came back from San Diego and yesterday we spent an afternoon at a, a school, a university dental center where it's a school for dental students and they work on patients for a fraction of the cost. And thanks to you ladies, we discovered it, we made an appointment, and oh my goodness, Moosey is going to get all new teeth and dentures for a fraction of the cost. I think I'm gonna start off with this, uh, a little bit of what I'm learning of a lymphatic drain system in my face. I've been noticing lately that when I wake up in the morning, I'm a little more puffy than I normally think I am. But particularly in the last video, when I showed you just one year ago, those Easter bonnets, that video that I made, and my face seemed just void of any facial puffiness or anything. I must have been doing some good, well, I was a year younger, and at this stage of aging, maybe there is a big difference in a year. Who knows? I'm going to show you what I have learned from practicing this last week, one full week. In the morning, after I wash everything off my face, you put any sort of a an oily, something that will make your fingers glide across your face easily. I always reach for my bio oil. You know, I've told you about that before. And it's the bio oil gel made by bio oil. I use it almost every day. And you know, I use my Nivea too. I use castor oil, but, but the castor oil is a bit sticky and thick. So if you want to use that and it's wonderful for your face and your neck, I've even discovered other things that people do with castor oil. And, and it seems to help. Everybody's raving about it. Um, anything oily, CeraVe would be fine, depending on what your skin is. I need really oily stuff, as you know. And now I'm gonna show you just a few things that I've learned. But um, you can use any of these. This one is particularly for around the eyes and pushing up eyebrows and things like that. This is a, a vibrating little thing. It's probably, haven't used this in a while, so it's probably not working now. No, but it does work with the little battery inside. I haven't used this too much, but this would be good too. I also have a gua sha or sha gua that um, you can use on your chin. And I love that. It's nice and cold. These things, and I have jade rollers. Uh, I have something in that I keep in the freezer that's a, a cold roller that you roll on your face. Nothing is more than $15. And you can use these if you want. However, most of the YouTubes that I watch of these professional lymphatic massagers who have licenses and doctors, they use fingers for a lot of this. And most of the time, if I'm in the bathroom and the closest thing are my fingers, so I will use them. And I have noticed, ladies, and I'm going to tell you this, in just in a couple of days of doing this in the morning, especially in this area, which is where I seem to be a little more puffy than I was, or maybe it's just good old aging, but I think it's puffiness and it works because when I start up here and I start coming down along the nasal passages and go across the cheeks, that's where your um, sinuses will always collect. And whether you have sinus problems or a cold or what, fluid collects in here, particularly here. And you have to take it out and massage it with your knuckles or with your fingers. I press because after all, these are muscles in my face and drainage tubes. And, and if you do that with the rest of your body, why not do it to your face too? I've always done that. When I rub in my Nivea, I rub, rub, rub all my life, and maybe that's kept me a little ahead of the game. So 
I'm gonna use my fingers right now and maybe pick up one of these for around the eyes. And I'm going to show you what I've done. And someone said that you will notice within half an hour or so, even sooner, that your nose will start to run a little bit. Well, not only that happens to me, that happened every single time, which meant it was working, but when I blew my nose, my sinuses cleared as well and I didn't even think they were clogged. So you have drainage points all over your body, but the ones that we're gonna work on right now and everything you're gonna bring down here, right in front of your ears or right here below it, and then it comes down your neck and into this chest cavity area where everything gets expelled from there on. And I've watched so many videos and picked up so many tricks. I can't remember them all right now, but I'm gonna show you what has been simple little things that has been working for me. I have started in the morning, right in the bathroom, in front of the mirror with my knuckles. And I start up here in the corners of the eyes and I rub little tiny circles on the sides of your nose and you will feel it, especially if you're clogged in that area, coming down, down and down, and then heading out under the cheekbones and out to the ears, and you just keep doing that. And honestly, it works. Now, what I was hoping it would work with too, and maybe it has, is my little laugh lines and my marionettes when I get down in this area. So keep doing that, I don't know, five reps. Do it slowly and give good pressure. Don't be afraid to press on your face. You know, a lot of people say, when you put your makeup on, you put it on little dots. I never do that. I rub, rub, rub a dub. Now, I have an assortment of some very inexpensive little tools. I just don't want to invest in any high price things for my face. Not the red light therapy, not um, big machines. Now, when you also get to the chin area, you can use this. Now, um, it does. it's not going to work because my batteries are dead. But you start up always from the chin up to kind of accentuate that jawline. You know, as you get older, you do lose that perfect sharp jawline. And you try as hard as you can to get it back. This will also give you little bits of artificial lifts, let's say, and you're working up toward the drain. Now, I have to tell you, I really became interested in this a year ago by my good friend, Barb. Now, I'll, I'll put the name of her video. Right now, uh, Barb is suffering a, a health problem and she's not putting videos up uh, maybe every two or three weeks, not as often as she was. But she has the most beautiful face, just free of lines and no wrinkles. And I don't notice her laugh lines, marionettes. And she really does every single day a very good routine of lymphatic drains. I'm going to use this just to demonstrate what I would do. Now, I also would get that little Sha Gawa tool, which is a piece of jade. It sort of looks like a heart, a funny, irregular heart. And it fits just here in the jawline. You're bringing everything up, trying to drain those lines into here. You're also working the muscles at the same time. So that's what I do. I can feel some draining starting to come down here from this. Now, you just keep doing that as long as you feel comfortable. Now you can use another tool or your fingers, and I would probably use my ring fingers from this. And it's the going around the circles under your eyes, pushing up here. Then you go the other way and you come down. Or you can start down here, go up, up here, and then down to the drain. Actually, you have to find that drain every time after this. Now, this also helps. Now, I've seen people do this, and they keep pushing these up. This could help your hooded, hooded eyes. I have hooded eyes, but my eyebrows are quite high, and I don't know why, but they're high, but my eyes are still hooded. So this could help. Now, you could use this under the eye as well. This is just a nice cold thing out the side out the side by the ear. You could use it here, here. I'd love to try and push everything out of here if I can. 
You know, it's not necessarily fat gain that you might see in your face. It could be just too much liquid that needs to be drained. And at the same time, we have to keep drinking water. So it has to go somewhere, right? Now you can do it here for your 11s. This tool is especially good for the 11s. Look on Amazon. I get all these facial massage tools on Amazon. And I've gotten all these so long ago that I can't remember exactly what ones I asked for. But there's such a great assortment of them on um, on Amazon. Now, if I want to use the fingers, I can use rings. I can use these two fingers for your lines. And you know, at the same time, make sure you have some oil on your face that helps everything glide off. At the same time, it feels good, but you know that you're probably doing something good, right? All this massaging of the facial muscles and all the drainage. There, this one I particularly like because that's where I would love to have a smoother face. I won't go into the neck today, but you want to come down and into this clavicle area here and then pushing all this. They say you're stimulating muscles too, to help work with the drainage system and then have it all land here. And then evidently from here, it goes away. Bye-bye is good. Now I have my my jeans overalls on, the ones with the flowers. I call them my garden overalls. And I have, these have flowers on the bib and also down on the legs on the bottom. I've been out in the garden this morning. As a matter of fact, I was up at seven and I did drag the cushions again out of the shed after all the rain. I just keep putting them back either in the car or back. But because we were going to San Diego, I had to drag them all into the shed. Well, this morning I dragged them all out, set them up for Moosey because it's a gorgeous day out there. It's in the 70s, mid 70s. Now, can you imagine? And I took a picture of those beautiful San Gabriel Mountains. Just the snow is on them and they're absolutely beautiful. We had to drive yesterday up near those at the foot of those mountains. And I felt as if they were on top of me. I've never seen the snow so low on those mountains. It was oh, just part of God's beautiful world. I just can't say enough about what we saw. And we had an appointment with Moosey. As you know, I did ask you, many of you, about where you went for reasonable dental care. Now, of course, we have Medicare and supplemental insurance, but nothing covers unless you have a certain kind, and we don't have that certain kind of Medicare. So our Medicare does not cover dental care. And uh, we kind of knew that Moosey needed to have all the rest of what teeth he has left pulled, and he needs dentures. And that would have been uh, probably ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 without insurance. And at this point, Moosey's going to be 87 over the weekend, by the way. And we thought that was just outrageous. And we had to look for alternatives. So I asked many of you in a video a couple of times ago, and many of you told me about these university dental schools who treat patients for a fraction of the cost of everything that you need. So I did some research and I found one that I felt was the closest to us. And I called them and sure enough, uh, this was about two weeks ago, I got an appointment for yesterday. So um, I filled out all the forms. Mikey ran them off for me when we were down in San Diego, filled them all in. And of course you have a lot of consent um, papers to sign, but general information. And I also typed up a, a whole page of Moosey's meds, morning meds, night meds, what they're for. And then our doctors, cardiologist, primary doctor, <clears throat> et cetera, VA doctor, because Moosey is also a vet. Now I did look into that, but in order to get total free dental care as a vet, you had to be a recent vet, uh, possibly in one of the recent wars. You had to be 100% disabled, blah, blah, blah. And Moosey didn't qualify. So, which is kind of a shame. I, I think um, a lot of people could use the, the uh, VA care. We do get our health care for Moosey through them as well, except for a few local specialists that we have here.
So we went up there and I had my GPS, got there within 20 minutes, 23 minutes, which was wonderful. And we were seen right away. And it is the most fascinating, amazing, wonderful system that these universities have training these dental students. There are many, many doctors, dentists and doctors walking around a big giant room that we went up to of easy parking and up in an elevator. Now I did uh, take the wheelchair for Moosey because it was quite a, well, not a big walk, but he could not have walked of this way with his rollator. I did get the wheelchair out of the trunk and that's what we used. <laughs> I did wake up this morning with a terrible shoulder and I think I overdid it just pushing that a little bit too much yesterday. So I've started some shoulder muscle exercises too, which I'll show you in another video, but I'm getting down a rabbit hole here. So we walked up after going up in an elevator, this whole big building is just dental. And we walked up into this big room. So, uh, a student came out. He was a four year graduate. He's ready to graduate. He came out and got us. They're so courteous. They're so nice, these kids and the doctors. And we walked into this giant area of 68 cubicles, big cubicles, not little tiny ones. Every one outfitted in the most up-to-date, beautiful equipment, chairs and, and everything. And they proceeded to examine Muthaji, look in his uh, mouth, a lot of questioning about all his meds because that's important. And of course, Moosey takes Eloquist, so you do have to be off Eloquist for a couple of days before. So we needed to get some permissions from our cardi cardiologist, which I am doing uh, this week. And they took him in, they x-rayed his teeth and his mouth and examined him. And in between these students, these doctors are just wandering around helping. I was talking to one of the dentists and the doc old, and you can tell because they're all older men. And uh, they, they have 70 students in a day that they handle. And I, I bet there must have been 20 doctors at least wandering around. And the students go to them after every thing they need or whatever. And the doctor, um, he, he's teaching all the time. And it, it reminded me of my days when I was teaching in Nevada. I loved having students. A lot of teachers don't like to have uh, practice to students, but when you're teaching, you also have to do, I think it's at least six months of practice teaching. And you have to go to a local school and a teacher totally takes care of you and fills all the forms in and teaches you how to handle a classroom. Well, I did that three or four years in a row when I was teaching there and the students were from the University of Nevada, which was a local uh, university nearby. And I loved it. And that's what these doctors do. So we came out of there. So he was accepted. That was the big thing I was worried about. I thought with Moosey, Moosey's age and uh, the fact that he takes a lot of meds, he's feeling great though. Everybody is keeps you know, their checkups going with Moosey. He's doing great. And after many questions and exams and x-rays, they accepted him as a patient. We are so thrilled because we are going to get full dentures and all his teeth, the rest of his teeth pulled. Um, there's a lot missing in the back. In fact, when we were on a cruise once, he, he had a beautiful, um, what do you call that, partial that he left on the bedside in our room the day we departed from the cruise and we went back and it was gone. You know, they start cleaning. So he never got another one of those, but it does take a little longer than you would because in between things they do, the doctor comes so well supervised that Moosey is, he thought he was gonna get his teeth pulled the first day and everything. He wouldn't listen to me or understand that that was not the way they do things, but He's so, he's, he's just so happy with everything. He was very impressed. And I want to thank you ladies, and there must have been 20 or 30 of you who have experienced these dental schools and told me about them. And um, I, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Let's see, what else did I want to talk about? 
my flowers from all the recent rain in the garden that I planted are thriving. And one new birdie that we are trying to track is a Baltimore Oriole. And Micah saw one up near his, uh, what are those, those orange pointy things called? He's got a, a lot of bird paradise. And I think the Oriole might have been attracted to those orange flowers up there. So I have an old bird feeder that's an Oriole bird feeder. And I took pictures of it to show you that uh, Orioles don't eat seed. They like oranges and they like nectar. And we're hoping to track an Oriole down here into our garden. We have a new bird feeder. Look at those beautiful mountains in the back, the snow covered mountains. But anyway, this is the new Baltimore Oriole bird feeder. Now, Micah said he saw an Oriole up at the house, probably around those birds of paradise. Anything orange attracts them. And look at this. Now, inside, we have oranges on both ends. This is a, a real Oriole feeder, places to put oranges, which they love. They don't like seed. And inside here, if I can turn this around, in here is a little jar glass jar that fits in and you put either grapes in there or grape jelly. What I didn't have the grape jelly on the end are the feeders. Over here there's another orange slice. They're attracted to the orange color. Now I've had this a couple years. Might have to spray the top. I've had it in the patio. We haven't been using it because we didn't have luck a couple years ago. So I put some marmalade jelly in here, along with some insides of orange peels, and we're gonna hopefully find a beautiful couple of Baltimore Oreos. Now, this is a Baltimore Oreo nectar feeder. They don't like seeds, but they love nectar like the hummingbirds do, and the oranges. And in here, these holes in the top are much larger than the hummingbird feeders because the Oriole beak is bigger and can get his beak in there. Now at the same time, will you look at those beautiful mountains out there? We drove up to Pomona yesterday, right at the base of these snow covered mountains and they are gorgeous. Look at that. We are so blessed with this view. The recent torrential rains of the Easter weekend have certainly helped our garden flourish. <laughs> the marigolds are coming out beautifully. The basil is growing. Now even that dill is taking off. My chives that I planted a couple of weeks ago are doing beautifully. And look at some of our mums. Look at the gorgeous colors of the mums that are coming out. Lavender is doing beautifully. All sorts of color. And look at that Asiatic lily. I have three lilies starting to come up. So, so pretty. Here's another view, if I can get close up, to these beautiful snow-covered mountains. Debbie gave us these beautiful flowers for Easter. I think they're a form of a succulent. It's absolutely so beautiful today out here. What do you think it is, Moose? 75, 72? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I just have a little bit of transplanting. Um, the flowers are doing beautifully with the recent heavy rains. And of course, now that the sun and the heat are coming down on us, we're, we're gonna see everything growing. Now I did have some of these little, um, I, I call them semi-succulents. I had them in here and this is too small. So I'm transplanting them in here. And these are even those ones that you can just clip off the bottom of a, a stem and pop them in dirt and they will actually grow. That's the beauty of succulents. My little frog who has been sitting on top of the, the water bird fountain has to come off because Moosey, as we speak, is getting the epoxy ready to put St. Francis back where he belongs. Now he did come off when the men, remember when those tree trimmers were here and they were climbing the palms with ropes and things. We couldn't believe it. So one of the branches that fell knocked St. Francis off his throne. And we're ready to put him up today. And as 
I'll film some of that. We did hear that we're supposed to have rain in three days again, so it looks like I'll be putting the cushions back in the car again, and off we go. I want to get enough dirt in here to completely fill up, let these guys have more dirt. I buy most of my succulents at um, the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store or 99 cent store, and I buy them little tiny ones for $1.29, $2, definitely under two. Many of them have gotten this big. Try it if you still have some of these stores near you. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I love the colors. Well, today's the day. And this is the epoxy. Loctite is the brand. Whoops. Oh. Tight. And you just squeeze it. Now we don't have to put this on both sides on the um, bird. I'm uh, getting into feet. a real problem here. What? Why? I don't know. Oh, okay. That's good. Just take the top off. Don't want it to get on your clothes. It's getting it on my fingers. Oh, <laughs> well, we might be able to take care of that. Now, how long do we wait before we stick right it? Now. Oh, right now I take it over? Yeah. Okay. I'll well, take it over. Doing. Good. Facing you. He'll stay there forever. Until the tree trimmers come next year. <laughs> <laughs> so St. Francis, our saint of animals and birds, is back where he belongs. There you go. Yep. Let me show you my outfit while you have that going. Okay? Yeah. Now, I don't have my garden shoe. This is cute. It's one piece, three... Um, three quarters length and Debbie gave this to me a couple years ago see the pretty flowers yeah and it's like a like regular overall yeah cute yeah good Shamu was enjoying the sun as well and there's St. Francis in all his glory among all the flowers and the birds let's hope he sticks well, I've just come in from the garden. I can see my face is flushed, but I think we accomplished a few more things. And I just put on some blush because I hadn't finished my makeup after I did my lymphatic drains. And I think it's working because my nose is running. <laughs> At least this one did, the nasal passages. I think I lost one of my earrings, either out in the garden or somewhere here in the house. I love these. They're made of leather, and I did buy them up in Idaho uh, at the Indian Reservations shop when Bunny and I went shopping one day, and I do like them. I know I'll find it, but let me know if you've tried some of these lymphatic drains, muscles, and, and uh, massages. Let me know if they seem to work for you, too. It's kind of nice to get some of the puffiness out of the face if they work. Thanks so much for watching, for commenting. We appreciate it so much. Bye for now. I love you all and God bless us all.